one of the most storied programs in college basketball. Maryland celebrating their 100th season of competition here tonight against the Delaware Blue Hens. The team started playing all the way back in 1910, here to stay after 1923, and they'll be rocking that 100-year logo all season long. 27 NCAA tournaments, of course, none more important than in 2002 when on that special night, the Terps captured their first and only national championship down in Atlanta, Georgia. They'll be hoping for a similar result this season, and it all starts tonight at home against the Delaware Blue Hens. Welcome inside the Xfinity Center. Excited to get college basketball back underway. I'm Jared Bellman alongside my friend and partner, Noah Gross. We've got college basketball finally back. Now we'll be waiting to say it since April. College basketball is here. We've got a good game to start our season. Yeah, very exciting matchup. A lot of fresh faces on both sides. Maryland, the number seven recruiting class in the country. Top two scores for Delaware from last year. Not playing this evening. One transferred, one injured. So we should learn a lot about both these programs tonight. We saw Maryland in an exhibition game, first regular season action tonight, and it comes up after this on BTN. Here on BTN, well, excuse me, welcome back inside College Park here on BTN. Jared Bellman and Noah Gross with you from the Xfinity Center, ready to get the college basketball season underway. We have starting lineups for you. The hometown Maryland Terrapins going with Junior guard Anthony Cowan alongside freshman Aaron Wiggins, Daryl Morcel, the sophomore, alongside them. And a couple of impressive big men, Noah, that Delaware will have to worry about. Inside, it's Bruno Fernando and talented McDonald's All-American Jalen Smith. Delaware will throw out Kevin Anderson, Darian Bryant, Eric Carter, the leading rebounder from a year ago for Delaware, along with a pair of transfers. It's Ryan Johnson and Colin Goss. See Bruno Fernando out there to get the tip for Maryland going against Carter. Mando opted to return to College Park this season for going the NBA draft. It used to be a big part of Maryland's game plan heading into his sophomore season. Both teams set. It's Maryland, it's Delaware. College basketball is back in College Park. Tip taken by Fernando and the Terps will start things off. They go right to Cowan, back inside, it's Fernando, he draws a double team, Morcel outside, he knocks it down. Noah, we heard about the improved jump shot from Daryl Morcel, didn't take long to see it. Yeah, Mor Morcel's going to be big for the Terps this year if they want to have any sort of outside threat. Here's Kevin Anderson, sophomore guard. Anderson limits only 11 games last season for Delaware. Gordon almost 14 points per game. He has it right now, working against Cowan. Now inside they go to Carter. Three up the Terps early on. Anderson lets a three go. Rattles out. There's Marcel with the board. Marcel active early on. They go to him again. Marcel tries again. Not happening that time. Foul called as Jalen Smith and Eric Carter were fighting for it underneath. But Noah, that's a great sign for Maryland. Aaron Marcel not afraid to shoot the three ball. Yeah, we could count on one hand how many three-pointers he made last year, and rumor had it he's an improved shooter, and so far, so good for him. Foul goes against Delaware. They'll inbound. Here's Aaron Wiggins, freshman from Greensboro, North Carolina. Marcel found himself open there, elected not to fire. Pick and roll. Cowan lets it pop, and he gets it to go. One of the man, one there, but a veteran move by Cowan, trying to draw the foul. Still got it to go. Friendly home roll. 5-0, Terps up early on here, just a minute play. See Cowan pressing from way outside the three-point arc against Anderson. Carter looking for some help on the inside. He finds it in the form of Goss. Transfer from George Washington. Four left on the shot clock. Great defense from the Terps and getting that to go with the buzzer. That's Ryan Johnson. Physical move there by Johnson Delaware, not able to create any space so far on the offensive end. Terps have not gone down to impressive big men yet. We'll see if that changes here. Fernando lobs it to Smith and couldn't quite connect right there. Gasol by himself. And Bruno Fernando says, Welcome to College Park. 
How about Bruno? One of the most electric players in the Big Ten, if not all of college basketball. Early on, game one, couple minutes in, huge block right there. Saw plenty of that from Fernando last season, a member of the all Big Ten freshman team. Mark Turgeon thrilled to have him back on his side this season. Anderson will try again. Comes baseline. Pass out to Johnson. And he gets that one to go. Driving kick may be the way the Blue Heads have to go tonight. So far, they've not been able to get anything going with iso ball. Allen using the pick from Fernando and out to Smith they go. Marcel already with three points this one. Out to the corner. Cowan, three-pointer. Not even close. Forced there by Cowan. Got to relax trying to get his first points of this season. It's interesting. We've already seen Maryland take three three-pointers. Of course, missing Kevin Herter declaring for the NBA draft. The Terps lost 70% of their made three-pointers from a year ago. And Fernando does it again to Colin Goss. Second block for the sophomore. Marcel Wiggins, three. Yes! Aaron Wiggins from outside. His first points as a Terp. Terps are looking great right now on both ends. Fernando, quite the rim protector so far, I'd say. And offensively, they are really hitting it from outside. It's 8 5 Maryland here, three minutes in. Carter handoff. Here's Anderson. Tight defense from Maryland. Bryant out to Goss. He tries a three and short. Rebound taken by Cowan, looking for an outlet. We'll try Fernando, will go back to Wiggins. Off the pick, Wiggins again. Can't get it to go that time, but there's Smith. He's fouled, and he'll go to the line to shoot a pair. So far, Wiggins not shy of taking shots from outside, but Jalen Smith inside. Been a little bit quiet so far. Fernando and him try to connect on a pass down low a minute ago. We'll see some of these freshmen, how they're acclimated to the team. Terps have already gone outside five times. They're two for five from three-point land. Chance for Jalen Smith to collect his first points as a Maryland Terrapin. And he got it. Smith, a five-star recruit, one of the best players Mark Turgeon has brought to College Park since he became the head man here eight years ago. Hard to believe we're in season eight of the Mark Turgeon era has flown by. Hoping to lead the Terps back to the NCAA tournament this year as Smith goes two for two. Pressing here again, Jared Maryland, a young, quicker team this year. Hungry, as Cowan said. Watch them to press a lot in this one. Delaware does manage to get it in, and they'll go up with Ryan Johnson. Three-pointer coming in, three-pointer hit. That's Ibiel Horton, freshman for the Delaware Blue Hens. He was expected to see significant time, and you see his outside abilities immediately. Both teams shooting a lot of threes so far, and both teams shooting pretty well. Here's Jalen Smith. He'll try one off the rim, but there's Fernando, the rebound, and the putback. Absolute force down low is Bruno Fernando. Pass knocked around in the air. Delaware able to keep, but there's the freshman Wiggins. Heads up play. Here's Cowan. Fakes the pass to Smith and takes it himself. Bryant would rather let in a layup than be a part of a poster. Terps are ready to go up for that one. Press giving Delaware issues early on, 14 to 8 Maryland. We played four and a half from College Park. Darian Bryant, the redshirt senior for Delaware, trying to calm the Blue Hens down. Hectic start for them. Delaware, the only team that made a sub so far. This Horton's in the game. There's Anderson. Fernando is in there. Rebound taken. And there is Eric Carter. That's the downside for going for every big time block from Fernando. You leave a man wide open, Carter on the offensive board. They're able to flip that one back up and in. Carter's third in the Colonial Athletic Association last year in rebounds. Just a little over nine per game. Inside, Smith turnaround jumper. Bounces off the rim. Delaware will take it. Smith seems Smith visibly. Take a three and a mid-range jumper thus far. And he's in on a pair of free throws. Let's see if he can play some defense here against Carter as he hits the turnaround hook. Visibly struggling here early on is Smith. You can see him kind of aiming his shot and defensively. Kind of got bullied there a little bit down low. Smith averaged 23 points, 12 and a half rebounds as a senior for Mount St. Joe's. Cowan lobs. Fernando tipped around. He gets his own rebound, tries to go back up, and he'll head to the line. Timeout from College Park. It's been an exciting one so far. Maryland up by two. Back after this on BTN. 
Welcome back here on BTN. Delaware hanging in with Maryland early on, but it's the presence of sophomore Bruno Fernando that's made a difference so far on defense for the Terps. Bruno Fernando offensively and especially defensively, as you mentioned, Jared, an absolute force down low. Delaware learning early. You always have to be aware of where Fernando is on the court. Expect them to try to shoot more threes from outside because it's just so tough to get a shot off on the big sophomore down low. Maryland, of course, will look to replace Kevin Herter, as we mentioned before, the top three-point shooter from last year's team, and a couple of substitutions for Maryland. Eric Ayala, freshman guard from IMG Academy, same high school as Bruno Fernando, as well as Ricky Lindo Jr., three-star recruit coming in for the Terps. One substitution as well for Delaware. It's Matt Ferretto into the game for the Blue Hens. Couple dribbles for Fernando. Can't get the first one to go. Delaware more so the team that struggled with free throw shooting. So they're going to be focusing on this year. Maryland pretty solid at it. It was a foul by Ryan Johnson as his first that awarded Fernando two shots to the strike, but he gets the second. And here comes Ricky Lindo. So Fernando will head to the bench. A lot of freshmen so far from the Terps. Mark Turgeon bringing them all out and sticking with the press. Lindo number 14 in white. Cowan still out there for the Terps. Anthony Cowan led the Big Ten in minutes last year. It felt like at times he was playing every single minute of every game. And you know, that kind of wore down on the Terps as the year prolongs. How can they change that this year? As the pass is taken away, Marcel can't keep it in. Well, for one, they have Ayala, who should be able to help out Cowan a lot. They do have a deeper team and a younger team, which should be very helpful to Mark Turgeon. You mentioned how Cowan seemingly played every minute, especially later in the season. Those real grinded out games in the Big Ten, notably at Michigan later in the year. He was really, really wearing down. Kevin Anderson looking for some space inside, chased out by Smith. Carter inside, he gets it. Smith went for the to stop the layup there, left his man, and that's what happens when Delaware is able to drive in. So far, they've had success driving and kicking. Team leading six points thus far for Eric Carter. Ayala out to Morcel. Delaware in a zone now. Here's Lindo. Doesn't get the friendly roll. Delaware, after Terps were hot, start to start from outside. Excuse me, Jared. They switched to a zone here early. We'll see if the Terps are able to adjust. They have struggled with that a lot in the past. Maryland got out to such a hot start, but Blue Hens have really closed down. It's a one-point game. Darian Bryant, little pull-up. Can't get it. Rebound tipped around and taken by Lindo. In transition, here come the Terps. Lindo with the Euro. There's Smith to put it back. Had to deal with his teammate Marcel hanging on the rim. How about Lindo there, 6'8", but moving coast to coast like a point guard. Ethiel Horton setting up the offense out to Carter, back to Horton and for his long-range ability. I mentioned at the top of the broadcast, Delaware dealing with a good amount of injuries as well. Top scorer returning from a year ago, Ryan Allen. Actually a local kid from nearby DeMatha High School. He's out till mid-December as Carter fighting for position inside. Rebound tipped around. Here it's Cowan speeding away. Could not connect with Ayala there. And Delaware. There's Bryant throwing it down. Darian Bryant getting up. Good play by Bryant. He's been really keeping Delaware in this game. Been a veteran presence for them, but on the offensive end for the Terps. Just a miscommunication between the junior and the freshman. Cowan way downtown and not close on that three-pointer. It's been a little bit off so far. He had a turnover on the last possession. Surgeon's going to bring him out here and for good reason. And you can see we were talking about it, how much Anthony Cowan had to play a year ago. Of course, this is just non-conference competition, but Cowan will get a rest here. A couple subs for the Terps. Bruno Fernando back in there as well as Aaron Wiggins. And it's Sorrell Smith Jr. Freshman making his debut from St. Petersburg, Florida, four-star recruit. You mentioned at the top, Noah, Maryland brought in the number seven recruiting class, according to ESPN, this season. And those freshmen are going to play a big role all year. Yeah, all the ones that are expected to play already in so far, and they look very energized to start their season in College Park. A little bit of rust, but they're seeming to kind of settle down as this game wears on. 
Johnson looking for some help. Here's Barreto. He has another freshman, Lindo, playing some tough defense. And he forces the missed shot. Another freshman, Aaron Wiggins, collects the rebound. Outlet to Ayala. Back to Wiggins. A three. Can't get that one. And there's Marcel. Another three coming from Ayala. Off the backboard. Fernando there to get the rebound, but he was fouled. So you said Maryland has cooled down a little bit from distance, Jared. I would say a lot recently, including not hitting the rim a few times. Time that will, for their sake, try to get their hot streak back from downtown. Timeout coming on the floor as you see Fernando trying to chase down the rebound. It was Marcel that got in there, three-pointer. Fernando fouled by Matt Ferretto before he was able to put one back up. Terps up by one. Timeout on the floor. We'll be back. Welcome back to College Park. Terps on top of Delaware, 17 to 16. Jared Bellman and Noah Cross with you from College Park. Noah, we've seen the freshmen very active so far for Maryland. Who has stood out to you the most thus far? Well, Jalen Smith has been very active, but he's been a little bit cold. And that's it, it's actually Lindo for me, though, defensively. He's been everywhere, really causing a havoc for Delaware on the offensive side. Joshua Tumayich into the game now from Maryland. Foul coming out of the timeout. Fernando inside, throws it down. Bruno did that a lot last year, and he has come back for more this season. I think Bruno may have the prettiest dunk in all of college basketball. Brings the knees up, Shaquille O'Neal-esque. Jacob Cushing Jr. into the game for Delaware. Hit the O'Horn. Looking for Verretto, thought about the three and said he'll take the two. Tomajic got crossed up pretty bad there. Turgeon going deep into his bench. We'll see if Tomajic is able to crack the starting rotation consistently this year after he was able to break in due to some injuries and lack of depth a year ago. I mentioned one of those injuries. We have not seen even Bender, who missed most of the year with a torn meniscus. It was a big loss for the Turks. Have not seen him yet. As Delaware takes it off the steal. Verretto in transition, looking for Johnson. Delaware hanging around here. It just looks like, it just feels like Maryland has played a better basketball game, but turnovers have kept the Blue Hens in, one, in this one so far. Verretto out to Johnson. He drives inside on Wiggins. Going to get the roll? No, but tipped around. It's Colin Goss finishing it off, and Delaware takes the lead. Goss was somebody I was very excited to see coming into this game. Had to sit out last year after coming over from George Washington. So far, he's been pretty solid with that tip in there to give the Blue Heads the lead. Tamayic, limited playing time last year. Inside, Fernando, he throws it down again. It's too easy out there for Bruno Fernando right now. Cushing is just no match for the powerful Fernando. May have gotten, with a little, may have gotten away with a little bit of a push off there, excuse me, but nevertheless, still the emphatic one-handed slam. Team high seven for Fernando, or, excuse me, Ayala. Of course the steal, Ayala to Tamayas. And that Terps are gonna be flying high this season, aren't they? And that may get Tamayas going. He had a pretty rough start as here, Bruno Fernando holding his right ankle. We'll see if anything's going there. Pointed to the Maryland bench and to Mark Turgeon saying, I might need a sub out here in a second. Especially this early in the season, you want to make sure you have a guy like Fernando for the long haul. He's hanging in there right now. There's a three-pointer coming from Ryan Johnson. Rebound taken by Maryland. 23-20 Terps. Sorrell Smith inside, forced loose. Looks like Fernando is okay, and even Bender getting ready to check in for Maryland. He signals to Mark Turgeon, I'm all right, I'm all right. On pass to Horton as Delaware's got 13 to work on the shot clock. Pull up jumper. Good. Ethiel Horton gets it to go. And Delaware cuts it back to one. Well, the Blue Ends are clearly not intimidated by this atmosphere here at the Xfinity Center. They seem very comfortable with what is maybe their biggest game of the year. Lob. Fernando again. He doesn't seem too bothered, does he? Not whatsoever. Bruno Fernando thought he was injured a minute ago. Still in the game and still throwing down alley-oops. Fernando's already had about three highlight finishes thus far, and we've just played over 12 minutes. That seems like a pretty good pace. Jumper from Horton. Can't get it to go. And there's Fernando on the rebound. 
So he's got a light jog going right here, but not afraid to get himself involved in the action at all. Eric Ayala splitting a double team inside of Fernando. He'll go out to Wiggins. His fourth three of the night is off. Delaware slowing things down. They've been really trying to push the pace against Maryland's team last year. They may have found more success. Maryland, as we talked about earlier, Anthony Cowan said this team's hungrier, and they are definitely younger. Pareto three-pointer off the mark again, and there's Smith taking the rebound. Timeout called, and we will take a timeout as well as Fernando will go to the bench, and Mark Turgeon will take him out. But take a look at what happened here. It's Fernando throwing it down as he's been doing all night long. Maryland on top of Delaware by three. First game of the season for college basketball back in College Park. We'll be back on the Big Ten Network. Welcome back to College Park. Maryland on top of Delaware, 25-22. Sarah Bellman alongside Noah Gross with you here on BTN. You see even Bender checking into the game for Maryland. First appearance since tearing his meniscus after just 18 games last year. The Terps, happy to have him back on the floor, Noah. Bender has been key at times for the Terps. I'm interested to see how much he gets used early on in this one. See Turgeon kind of eases him in a lot this year. It's number 13 standing in the middle for Maryland. Here comes Morcell trying to power his way down, and he hits the fade away. So Morcell, we've, we've talked about Morcell's improved shooting, Jerry, but we just looked at him pregame. He's clearly a stronger guy, so maybe he's improved outside and inside, as we saw him right there bullying the defender. We haven't seen him shoot the three, and we certainly have not seen too much of that. Morcell, more of a slasher last year, but he looks like he's put on a little bit of weight, and he looks like a much different player as well. Foul called against Maryland. Pace has definitely slowed down here in College Park after a pretty frenetic start to this one, but the Terps are slowly starting to get their lead back. They were down by a couple points a little while ago. Up by five is Maryland, and the Terps force a five-second violation. Our Turgeon fired up on the bench, and the Terps will take over. Yeah, I was about to say, Turgeon loved that one. Defensive coach trying to get his team engaged on that side of the ball. They started off very well, very aggressive on that defensive end. Delaware could get no space, but since then, the Blueheads have been able to get some open shots. They are a good sign for the Terps, holding them to a five-second violation. Four guards and even Bender on the floor for Maryland as Marcel has it with 10 on the shot clock, slashing his way inside, and he has it forced loose. Bender can't collect the rebound, and Darian Bryant comes the other way for Delaware. Working his way inside, they can't get the layup to go. Rebound taken by Wiggins. Cowan able to control. Wiggins thought about a 3, 20 on the shot clock for Ayala. It's Bruno Fernando leading the way for Maryland as Jalen Smith gets ready to check back in for the Terps. Wiggins working his way inside, he's fouled. Kevin Anderson looked like he got him on the arm right there. So Maryland clearly been the aggressor inside so far, getting more free throws than the Blue Hens. This will be five and six for the Terps. Delaware still yet to go to the line, and for their sake, that's almost probably a good thing. They were one of the worst teams in the country last year at the charity stripe, around 65%. Delaware has not scored in the last two and a half minutes as Wiggins knocks down his first free throw. Jalen Smith checking back in for Maryland as even Bender gets a quick rest on the bench. So three freshmen in the game for the Terps right now. Wiggins, Smith, and Ayala. And then a sophomore and a junior. Another young lineup for this Mark Turgeon-led ball club. I know it's interesting to see. This happened about two possessions ago. But you see Anthony Cowan alongside Eric Ayala. And Cowan pretty much handled all of the ball handling duty last season, but over them on the court at once, it was Ayala bringing the ball up, and that's something we can expect to see from Maryland as Anderson lets a three go. He was knocked down and couldn't get it to knock down. Take it by Marcel, looking for Smith, couldn't find him. Here comes Horton! Ethel Horton with the contact, able to throw it down. What a play by the freshman from Vauxhall, New Jersey. Horton got up right there as soon as he got the ball. I saw a defender in his periphery, but he had one thing on his mind, and that was throwing it down with the inside hand, no less. That was a thing of beauty right there. Horton looking to complete the end one. Got it. Opening night, but you can 
to feel the presence of this Xfinity Center crowd, one of the best environments in college basketball. Something Mark Church has been focusing on this year, trying to fill the wall. A lot of fans here tonight. Cowan, step back. Can't get it. Taken by Carter. Just a little over five to go. Ryan Johnson brings it up for the Blue Hens, who trail this one by four. There's big favorites, but the stakes have kept Delaware in this one thus far. Blue Hens telegraphing some of their passes. Now Maryland with a few near steals in almost every possession. Horton looking for some help to go back out to him. Long range three pointer. Almost got it. Jalen Smith with the rebound. Yeah, you see a different ball handlers. Here's Aaron Wiggins trying to twist and turn his way inside, but can't get it. Delaware back the other way. Bryant inside. Carter, he's fouled. Daryl Morcel got him as he went up the layup. Second foul on Morcel in the last couple possessions here. And props to Delaware, Jared. When they're pushing the ball on a fast break, they're pretty lethal. We saw that just highlight dunk a couple minutes ago by Horton. Here getting inside, drawing the foul, going to the free throw line for just the second and third time tonight. It's been a rough couple of years for Delaware as Carter can't get the three to go. Less than 500 the last four seasons after making the NCAA tournament in 2014 as a 14 seed out of the Colonial. But Delaware looking to get back on track this year, led by third-year head coach Martin Inglesby. That's the second one. And on that free throw, it's pretty clear there with Smith and Fernando now in the game. And Goss, the tallest player for the Blue Hens, out. The Terps are going to play a lot of small ball this year, don't get me wrong, but they have a huge height advantage right now. Fernando, he's able to collect before he's fouled. Probably a smart move by Delaware. Would have been another highlight finish for Bruno Fernando. He just has so much spring in those legs. And for almost a seven-footer, that's very impressive. He Every time he gets the ball down low, you see his eyes just shoot up to the rim. And he looks like he's ready to throw it down. And as you mentioned, probably a smart foul there, trying to keep the crowd out of this one. Leto back into the game for the Blue Hens. Wiggins throwing the lob to Fernando. He collects and he slams. That ankle seems to be just fine. I don't even know how he caught that ball, <laughs> let alone dunk that. That was an ill-advised pass from the inbounds, but he just said, I'm getting this ball and I'm dunking it. Carter couldn't handle the pass here because the Terps in transition. It's Cowan with the layup. Time out, Blue Hens. Martin Inglesby not liking what he's seen as Maryland has gone on quite a run to build their lead to seven. Anthony Cowan on the finish from Aaron Wiggins in transition.
been the most impre impressive freshman to me so far with his energy on both sides of the ball has been very fun to watch and Terps were struggling to really pull away from Delaware who was playing very well to start off in this one but as of late Maryland pulling away and Mark Church has got to be very excited from what he's seen so far. We've already seen five freshmen so far four of them making a tremendous impact we haven't seen a whole lot from Sorrell Smith Jr. thus far Jalen Smith, Aaron Wiggins, Eric Ayala Ricky Lindo all playing big roles thus far for Maryland as they've run this lead all the way up to 17. This was a tie game about 10 minutes ago, but Maryland has just played tremendous basketball. 1.8 to go, heave to Smith. He's got to let one go, and he cannot get it. But Maryland closing the half on a 15-1 to one run. They hold Delaware scoreless for the final three and a half minutes and the Terps on top by 17 as we head into the half. Maryland looked very solid to finish up there, and it was really defense turning into offense. They caused multiple turnovers for Delaware, who credit to them, as you mentioned, Jared, did look good to start this one, but Maryland is too big, too strong, too physical inside, really pulling away now from the Blue Hens. Terps shooting 52% in the first half, led by Sophomore Bruno Fernando, his team high 11 on a 5 for 5 shooting night so far. We'll see how much more highlights we see from the sophomore big man in the second half. Maryland on top by 17, halftime in College Park. We'll be back for the second half on BTS. Second half getting ready to start here in College Park. Take a look at some of the first half highlights. They were filled with this guy, Bruno Fernando, a team high 11 points, three blocks, and some unbelievable dunks, Noah. 11 points for the sophomore. I think Mark Turgeon and fans here in the Xfinity Center are pretty happy he returned for his sophomore season with some skepticism he may leave for the draft, but he is really making his impact felt with some highlight reel blocks, highlight reel dunks. The scary moment early on for the Terps. Thought Bruno might have rolled his ankle or something, but I think it's fair to say he looks pretty healthy along with Jalen Smith, another big man. And this Terrapin team really pulling away as of late, seeing some offensive highlights now here. Jalen Smith pulling back, knocking one down. But defensively, Jared, that was huge for that too. Nine points for Jalen Smith, 11 for Fernando. You take a look at the first half stat breakdown. Maryland shooting at 52%. Delaware was hanging in with the Terps at the beginning of the first half, but it just really unraveled for them as the game went on. Maryland closing the first half on a 15 to one run over the final four minutes. The Terps all the way up to 17, leading Delaware here on the scoreboard. Getting ready to play the second half. The Terps will roll out there starting five. Delaware will do the same. Anthony Cowan coming to the near side to defend the inbound against Darian Bryant. Kevin Anderson. Sophomore guard working against Cowan. Cowan at eight in the first half. Bryant looking inside for Eric Carter. Fernando, they get by him. Carter's been a presence down low when they've been able to find him so far. Yeah, and Fernando with two fouls already. Three away from obviously getting out of this one. Didn't want to be too aggressive early. A little bit lackadaisical on that first defensive possession. Cowan looking for Wiggins on the other side, and they go back inside to Smith, and offensive foul will go against the Terps. So there was all momentum on the side of Maryland, clearly after that run to end the first half. But it's Delaware here, only two possessions in, but they're getting a bucket and forcing a turnover against the Terps. They have a chance here to cut the lead down. Jalen Smith called for the offensive foul, his first, and his first turnover. So Delaware down by 15, they've got work to do, but again, they showed in the first half they can hang around with this Maryland squad as Eric Carter, already two points so far in the second half, looking for two more, turn around, fade away, uses the bank, and gets it to go. And that's energizing the Delaware bench, looking at the Blue Hen bench over there, they are very excited so far. Here comes Fernando trying to finish again, and he's hacked. 44-31, 18 49 to play here in the second half. Another smart foul there by the Blue Hens. Fernando 
had that full head of steam going forward, and he knew what he wanted to do, slam that one down with two hands. He'll take the free throws, though. And quickly here, Jared, as Bruno knocks this one down, you see the wall, as they call it, here in the Xfinity Center behind Bruno Fernando. That's been a rallying cry for Mark Turgeon and company to fill the wall, get the students out to the stadium here. There it is. Pretty good crowd here for a Tuesday in College Park, the season opener. Fernando two for two from the stripe, and it's especially menacing for opponents as the second half starts. Free throws will be tough going up, looking right into the wall. So Fernando perfect from the line. Delaware looking to put together another solid possession. They've scored their first two of the second half. Bryant looking for Johnson, and they go into the corner. Kevin Anderson driving inside, and he's fouled. Blue Hens have been pretty aggressive here to start half number two. Still a 15-point deficit. It's not like Mark Church is really resting anyone here. Most of his starting group still in this game, obviously, anchored by some of the veterans with the freshmen making an impact, too. Refs will say that Anderson was fouled before the shot. It's been a rough go so far for Anderson, the leading returning scorer that Delaware had available tonight. 0 for 5, 0 for 4 from long range today, 0 for 5 from the floor. Rebound tipped around, Delaware cannot get it in their grasp as Brian Johnson tried to run it down, it's Maryland Bolt. Goss was fighting down low there for the Blue Hens, was excited to see what he would bring to the table tonight. Been pretty quiet, started for this Blue Hens team tonight, but I've seen a ton of action after he was first subbed out, but they're trying to get the ball back for Delaware. Yeah, Goss was sat out last year after transferring from George Washington as Cowan tries to twist his way inside. Fernando collecting the rebound. Back out to Cowan. Shot, shot clock, excuse me, does not reset. Fernando, Smith, free throw line jumper, not close. Rebound collected by Fernando. He goes back up and he throws it back down. Fernando continues his highlight night and gets the Maryland faithful on their feet. That's what the Xfinity Center loves to see. Bruno Fernando hyping them on and on opening night here in College Park. Making a pretty loud go of it against Delaware. All the way across the court, they find Goss, and he's short on the three-pointer. Rebound taken by Wiggins. Lead back up to 17 for Maryland. Marcel wide open in the corner, can't find him yet. Fernando trying to work his way inside, tipped around, and will stay Maryland ball. And Marcel was very, very active from long range in the opening minutes of this game. A couple of three-pointers attempted, but he's been quiet since then. And to be honest, I have not really needed him with the way that Bruno Fernando has played tonight. They go to him again. 20 on the shot clock for the Terps up by 17. Wiggins thought about a three. Got Anderson up in the air, and they go back out to count. Inside as a shot blocked there. Smith with the recovery and the finish. Great play there by Jalen Smith. Crowd loves it. Cowan disappointed in himself. Tried to throw the body into the defender there. Bryant number four for the Blue Hens, but could not quite get it enough. Bryant clearly bigger than Cowan. Johnson tries a three. Bruno Fernando collects the rebound. Outlet. It's Wiggins underneath, and he's fouled. Aaron Wiggins would have had quite the finish there, but just could not get it to fall between the cylinder. Terps are really trying to get out in transition. Saw Wiggins there early. Didn't think the Terps were going to take that shot to give it to him, but he ended up getting it with a little bit of space. Thought he could have laid that one in with the right hand. Decided to go with the reverse. Something we've seen numerous times from the Terps tonight. Opting to go for the reverse layup when the normal one on their strong side is open anyway. Three for three for Aaron Wiggins tonight. Freshman from Greensboro, North Carolina. Wiggins has been very active from long range. Already four three-pointers attempted so far. Maryland's leads up to 20, the largest it's been tonight. And Wiggins goes two for two. Delaware looking to keep this interesting. But Maryland really, need, really, really taking it to the Blue Hens right now. Carter off a screen, they go 
to Horton, who had an impressive first half. And the Terps create another turnover. It's the lengthy Wiggins doing it again. Here's Marcel out to Wiggins, thought about a three. Back to Marcel in the corner and inside of Fernando, and he immediately draws double team. To Wiggins, cross court, three pointer. No, Fernando right there for the rebound, but he tips it out of play. Bruno Fernando is an absolute electric factory. That's <laughs> nearly seven feet tall, so he's bodying people inside trying to get rebounds, obviously hyping up the crowd too, but he's just never giving up on plays. Almost got another offensive rebound for the Terps there, and Jared, look out again, Maryland pressing something they did early on, but then went away from it. Double team in the corner, and Delaware is able to get it across the timeline here. 16 to play in the game, Maryland in control of this one. See how deep into the bench Mark Turgeon elects to go as we get closer and closer to the end of this one. But Maryland comfortably in front as Kevin Anderson goes inside and lets the end one layup. Daryl Marcel called for the foul there. And a timeout on the floor. Maryland's lead up to 19 here. Bruno Fernando picking up right where he left off in the first half. Take a look. Kevin Anderson with the silky finish against Daryl Morcell. He'll head to the line for one more when we come back on BTN. Welcome back to the Xfinity Center in College Park. Jared Bellman and Noah Gross with you here on BTN. Noah, more to the same that we saw in the first half. It's the Bruno Fernando Show here in College Park. He is unbelievable and he's clearly taken steps to improve his game. And we were looking at the Terps pregame and we thought Daryl Morsell might be the one who's taking the biggest leap. But early on, I mean, Bruno Fernando was great last year, especially in spurts, maybe not consistently. But this is one game, not even finished yet, still about 16 to go. But he looks like arguably one of the best players in the entire conference. Kevin Anderson gets the end one to go right there. Now Delaware in a press. See Maryland in that all game long. Delaware, see if it'll work for them too, but Maryland beats it and they'll go out to Ayala. Inside, Smith on the finish from, Fer or the feet, excuse me, from Fernando. That's something Mark Turgeon has to be very excited about. Big men finding each other. Verretto for the Blue Hens lost a shoe there and I'm sure didn't want to be posterized with just one shoe so helped out on Fernando and left Smith wide open. Darian Bryant looking for some help he finds Anderson. He just had his first field goal of the night. Verretto open in the corner. And Wiggins collects the board. Two shoes that time for Verretto. Still not the result he's looking for. Maybe he should try with no shoes. Only one left. Cowan's got two shoes and he's got two points. Allen up to eight tonight for Maryland. Starting to settle in a little bit is the junior. Foul called off the ball and they're going to get Cowan. And he does not love the call. Yeah, it was so definitely Bruno Fernando. It definitely was Fernando arm barring a couple blue hens over there. And that's just a silly foul from Bruno who was really playing off ball defense against Delaware early, not being too aggressive in this second half, but they're just a careless foul. And that's one he can't really afford to have, especially later in this season, more important games. Maryland on top by 22 here. Bruno Fernando leading the way with 15 points. Terps very much in control here with a little under 15 to play. And looks like they're going to review the foul. So no, you thought you saw a clear arm bar by Fernando. We didn't get a great look at exactly what happened. Yeah, Fernando was being a little bit too aggressive there on the defensive side, which as we were talking about earlier, a little bit unexpected. He's been a little bit more calm on that defensive side of the ball than what he was in the first half, which I guess is not saying too much. I mean, he was blocking everything in sight, just jumping out of the gym. We've been talking about him enough, but maybe the two best players on this Maryland team, two of the more veteran players, are Bruno Fernando now as a sophomore, and obviously Anthony Cowan, a veteran now, an extension of Mark Turgeon on the court. Bruno obviously looking great, but Cowan kind of settling in a little bit too. Just hit that nice little step back jumper. And if those two are working in unison, especially with Ayala maybe bringing the ball up at times, that could be a lethal pick and roll and two man game between Cowan and Bruno Fernando. Yeah, Cowan named a preseason All Big Ten member, and gonna, looks like the foul will be upheld here. The official signaling to Maryland to get back on defense. 
56-34 Maryland on top of Delaware. You take a look at Anthony Cowan's night. Four for ten from the floor with ten points. Junior point guard. One of the big leaders that Mark Turgeon has. Here's Eric Carter. Trying to fight his way inside and he draws a foul. Jalen Smith called there on the whistle. He doesn't like that call either in terms of big men racking up some fouls here. And that is good news for Delaware, but they're not the best free throw shooting team, especially last year on 65%, as we've mentioned. So getting to the line may not be a huge boost for their offense. Hit the O'Horton with 15 on the shot clock, finds Anderson. Side to go to Carter. He goes baseline and goes reverse to get the layup. Nice finish there from the senior. Technical foul call. A timeout, excuse me. After that play, there was some barking between both teams. And after the bucket there by Carter, he's talking to the officials. I believe he wanted a foul, and it actually is going to be a technical on him. That was a quick whistle there. Did, obviously couldn't hear what was said from over here in the booth, but uh, was a pretty quick whistle there for the technical. Cowling gets the free throw to go. Technical called on Eric Carter. So two free throws and Merrill will keep possession. So Delaware did have some momentum there. They were playing pretty well, and I mean, that's just obviously going to kill it for them. You can't have that. If you're Carter, coach has got to hate that. Other players got to hate that. Like I said, it was probably a bit of a quick whistle here, but they're pressing. They're trying to get back in this game, show coaching staff something in game number one, but that's just a silly, silly play right there. Sorrell Smith back into the game for Maryland. It's four, or excuse me, three guards, along with Ricky Lindo and Jalen Smith. So four freshmen and Anthony Cowan on the floor for Maryland, trying to find Smith inside. He does. Smith trying to go back up, and Carter with a rejection, but Smith right there for the rebound. Once again, can't get it to go, and we'll see what the call is here as Ricky Lindo was flying in, trying to save it, but it's Delaware basketball. How about Eric Carter here for the Blue Hens? Had that big bucket inside. Big in that technical foul, but he's really energizing this Blue Hens team. And you know every time the Carter gets the ball, this Maryland crowd is going to let him hear it, but Blue Hens able to beat the press, and Kevin Anderson will try to set his team back up. 14 to play here in College Park. Maryland in control. Anderson using the screen, trying to find Carter. It slips through his legs, tipped around, and Carter has it with eight on the shot clock. He's backed out all the way to the three-point line. Anderson with five. Inside on Smith. Long layup, and he finishes after the rebound. No chirps inside there defensively. Anderson, out of a bit of a half euro step, but able to get his own miss there. Smith tries a jumper. Can't get that one. Lindo on the rebound. He goes with his left hand. Tipped around, and Delaware has it again. It looks like Smith had a lot of space there, but elected to try to go inside to Smith instead. Anderson tries a three, blocked. Eric Ayala got his hand on it, and here come the Terps. Smith lost the handle. Jalen Smith thought he was fouled, but John looked like he never had a handle on the basketball. I think Jalen Smith may need to go to the Bruno Fernando School <laughs> of Dunking, going up a little bit stronger than he has the past few times. That one may have been a foul, might have got hit on the hand, but he's gotten blocked a couple times in the last minute here. Anderson out to Horton. To try a jumper and another air ball. Speedy Cowan in transition, looking for some help. Cowan hanging in the air, and he's fouled. 12.32 to play here in the game. As Cowan will head to the free throw line. So for how much credit we're giving Bruno Fernando, Eric Carter, a senior from Jackson, New Jersey, is making his presence felt almost equally in this second half, what Fernando is doing in the first half. Maybe not as much flair, but he's inside, making Maryland try to think where he is every time they go up for a layup. Had a foul there, but he's been everywhere. 13 points for Carter, leads the way as Cowan can't connect on the first free throw. Substitutions coming in for Maryland. Jalen Smith heads to the bench, and even Bender returns for Maryland. And it's interesting because even before the injury, Noah, even Bender had to play a substantial amount of minutes, minutes excuse me, even started a couple of games 
for the Terps, but we've seen him very sparingly here tonight. Yeah, which is good news for Mark Turgeon. You have a guy that started games last year, and you barely have to use him now. Talk about depth. Turgeon said this team reminds, reminds him of one a few years ago when they had a lot of it. So pretty encouraging for Maryland fans, the youth and the depth of this team. Of course, injuries have been a major concern for Turgeon teams in the past as Eric Carter continues his dominant night with a floater over Bender. It's been a knock against Bender. Not the most fleet of foot at times. Got beat off the dribble right there. Bender, the younger brother of Dragon. There for the Phoenix Suns. Former fourth overall draft pick. Here's Horton under 12 to play in College Park. Anderson on the far side. They go inside to Carter. Maryland now in a bit of a scoring drought. They haven't scored in the last two and a half minutes. They're over their last six from the floor. Carter trying to will his team back in this. They go to Anderson. He fakes a three, takes a three, can't make it though. Shot clock resets for the Blue Hens. Horton. Off glass, can't get it to go, and there's Lindo flying in for the block on Eric Carter. Timeout on the floor. Maryland continuing to build upon their impressive lead here in College Park. 58 to 40. Turps on top of Delaware. Back in a moment on BTN. Welcome back to College Park. Maryland on top of Delaware in the season opener here from Xfinity Center. Take a look at Eric Carter right here. 15 points, 7 of 9 from the floor. And you know, despite the technical foul, Carter's really been the only really positive player that Delaware's had tonight. The only one really kind of trying to De keep them in this. Yeah, Delaware's only scored one less point than Maryland in the second half, in large part because of Carter. Fernando, after a hectic transition right there, collecting for Maryland. Loving to play in College Park, Eric Ayala. Freshman has only two points thus far. He goes to Wiggins, back inside of Fernando, cross court. They try Sorrell Smith. They can't get his three to go. It's been Carter and Kevin Anderson who have done a bulk of the work thus far in the second half for Delaware. In the second half, Maryland just continues to build on its lead. Carter tries a jumper and makes it. This kid can really do it all. Eric Carter, physical power forward, 6'9", 235, senior from Jackson, New Jersey. Inside Lindo, they go out to Smith. Ten and a half to play. Aaron Wiggins looking for Ayala. He fakes a pass, takes a three, and can't make it. Rebound taken by the Blue Hens. In Maryland and Delaware, I say both teams picked to finish seventh in their respective leagues. Delaware finished seventh last year. Made it past the first round of the Colonial Tournament as Kevin Anderson takes another three, but there's Carter with a rebound and the finish in the end one. Eric Carter, 17 points tonight. How about the night from Carter? Just non-stop effort. Puts this one up and in with a couple big serps there defensively. He now has 19 points on the night. This free throw could make it up to 20. His career high, Jared, 23. So he's quickly approaching that with over 10 minutes to go here in half number two. Delaware has started to cut into the lead. It's, it's down to 14. It was up as high as 22. Carter makes the free throw, completes the and one. Bruno Fernando just went to the bench with his fourth foul of the game. So that was something the sophomore struggled with in his freshman campaign. He was electric when he was on the court as Cowan takes the three from the corner. Well, well short. A foul called. We'll see if it was before the shot. And I don't claim to be a basketball scout here, but it's pretty clear Cowan is not feeling it from distance tonight, and he just is not using his legs, which is kind of the go-to criticism for a lot of shooters when they're cold, but he barely left the ground right there and looked like he was just really aiming that one, not himself tonight from outside. Off-ball foul called against Ryan Johnson. 18 on the shot clock for Maryland. Cowan inside, lobs to Smith, he collects, and there's Eric Carter again. How about the senior in this second half? He is trying to will Delaware back into this game. Outside they go. Jacob Cushing for three. Delaware, they've cut it to 10 with 10 to play. 
Delaware fans that are here in their Xfinity Center trying to make some noise, as is the team. Or making their presence felt here in College Park after it looked like they were out of this one, but they're outscoring Maryland now by seven in this second half. 12-0 run for Delaware over the last four minutes has brought the Blue Hens back to within 10 against Maryland on the road here in College Park. Maryland calls a timeout. We'll take one as well. 58-48, Terps on top of Delaware. We'll be back in a moment on BTN. Delaware is making their comeback. Jacob Cushing taking a look at this three right in the eye hole of Aaron Wiggins, and the Blue Hens have cut it to 10. Maryland scoreless in their last five minutes. The Blue Hens outscoring the Terps by seven in the second half. And we're making this one interesting. Now what, how have the Blue Hens turned it around? Well, it's a large part because of Carter down low, but they're playing with a lot more confidence as a team. Here comes Eric Aliala. Creative finish, able to bring the lead back to 12. 12-2 run now for Delaware in the last four minutes out of the timeout. See if they can keep that momentum going. Under nine to play. Traveled by as much as 22, lead down to 12. And Maryland basketball, Daryl Morcell able to throw it off the leg of Eric Carter. Good hustle play there from Morcell, who's been pretty quiet himself. Just five points on um, two of three, shooting one of two from downtown for the sophomore. Hit that first three really on, or really early on, excuse me, Jen. We thought it might be a theme tonight, but since then, really been very quiet. Morcell trying to go baseline, can't get it to roll. Bryant's a quarter who's been the catalyst for the Blue Hens in this second half. And can he shoot a three? Yes, he can. How about Eric Carter in this second half? That ties, his, that ties his career high, excuse me, Jared, and it brings his team within single digits. He is on fire right now. Lead down to nine, 23 for Eric Carter. Inside to Marcel, he can't handle the pass. The Terps are playing sloppy now. has outscored Maryland by eight in the second half, and they've cut the lead to nine. The Terps create a turnover right there. It's Marcel trying to take this one by himself, pushing, rejects it, but it's called for the foul. Tough play there by Marcel. Like he had Cowan on the far side, but that was good defense there by Cushing. He was kind of blocking both lanes. It was three on one, but... Marcel almost did the, the right thing there, even though he almost got blocked. Nine-point game, under eight to go. Maryland looking to hang on, but Delaware on the comeback. Back in a moment on BTN. Welcome back to the Xfinity Center in College Park. Jared Bellman, Noah Gross, and Delaware making this one interesting as we get into later portions of this second half. Eric Carter leading the way for the Blue Hens. Willing them back in his game, tying a career high with 23 points. Daryl Morcel headed the line for the Terps, trying to extend the lead back to double digits. Now take a look at that. It's a 15 to 2 run for the Blue Hens over the last five and a half, and Morcel can't bring the Terps any closer. Maryland has been very solid at the line tonight. 16 of 19 before that. Now 80%. 16 of 20. So it gets the back end. Well, it's the bench. Terps going big now with Bender coming in the game. Morcel going out, so Bender and Smith. And Bruno Fernando on the bench with four fouls, but we'll see how long Marturgeon can afford to keep him out of the game and use Bender and Smith and a collection of other bigs. Maybe if you mix in Ricky Lindo there, but Bruno Fernando has unquestionably been the best big that Maryland's had tonight, but with a foul situation, and Delaware coming back, and you can see how he manages it. Terps in transition here, and will be stopped here, and a foul called against even Bender, it looks like. It was a technical foul, if I'm not mistaken, and well, if you can here, we are at Maryland's home court, and they do not seem to like that call very much. Neither does Turgeon or Bender, for that matter. Not quite sure exactly what happened there. A fast break almost for the Terps, and then all of a sudden they teed up even Bender, and 
It's not going to help his case for more playing time here. Mitchell's taking a look at something on the video replay. And as we take a look, we see exactly what happened. Maryland's transition was just stopped mid-play by the trailing official. It looked like Bender was the one who was upset and called for it. Yeah, Bender was down low, tangled up with one of the blue hens right there. That's Kevin Anderson. And he was on top of him as Cowan was, excuse me, Wiggins was moving forward. And as he was trying to get up, that may have been the call. But Bruno, or excuse me, Bender was around half court when the whistle blew. So we'll see if the officials made the right call here because Bender seemed just dumbfounded by that one as did Turgeon. Foul has been given to even Bender. Unclear if it's just a regular foul or a technical. And Mark Turgeon eagerly awaiting the result of this call. And even Bender, not the best stat line so far tonight. Zero points, zero rebounds, zero assists, and two personal fouls in three minutes. That doesn't sound like the most efficient night. Yeah. So it's a double flagrant one foul on the Terps. And the official come over and telling us. So Bender credited with the flagrant one. Again, this all happened while Maryland was in transition, but you saw the shot where Bender was kind of just holding his man down. Mitchell saw enough there to throw a flake grenade. So the madness sorted out here. It'll looks like it'll remain Maryland basketball. Yeah, I believe there was actually a foul on both teams right there. It's a double flagrant. Maryland keeps possession. Wiggins inbounds to Ayala. Three freshmen on the floor for the Terps. They continue to go with Bender inside with, with Jalen Smith. Bender tries to bounce past to Smith and bounce it past his legs. But actually near here saying it's tipped off of Delaware. Bender really struggling to have any success right now. You mentioned a little while ago how long can Turgeon afford to keep Fernando on the bench. Seems like that answer may be answered rather quickly. 13 on the shot clock for Maryland, ahead by 10. Cowan, pull up, can't get it. Rebound by Anderson. Delaware a chance to cut it back to single digits, and they've got seven minutes to play here in College Park. And that foul officially was a double on Bender and Anderson for both teams. That's why the Terps kept possession. There's seven now. It's Anderson outside, Cushing, a three, he got it! Jacob Cushing cuts the game to seven, his second three of the second half. As soon as Cushing made that, looked up at the scoreboards to see how many they were down, and it's just seven. Maryland really letting the Blue Hens back in this one. Six and a half to play, lob to Smith, he gets it to go off the glass. Maryland struggled with a lot of those alley-oops inside tonight, not able to connect on a ton of them. Right there in a crucial moment, they are able to get one to fall. Back up to nine, Delaware calls timeout with 6.13 to play. We've got a game here in College Park. Take a look at Jacob Cushing Jr. from Illinois, hitting from way outside, wide open in the corner. Delaware on the comeback in College Park. Terps up by nine. Back in a moment on BTN. Welcome back to College Park, Maryland, on top of Delaware by nine. Jared Bellman, Noah Gross with you. And Noah, we thought we were going to have a blowout here in College Park, but Delaware is making this one very interesting. Eric Carter leading the way with 23 points, but it's the three-point shooting of Jacob Cushing down the way that's really led the Blueheads back. Yeah, a few big ones for him, and Carter even hit a three himself, the first one of his college career. Carter, turn around, got it again, career high, 25 points for the senior Eric Carter. And Delaware has cut it back to seven. Marcel Wiggins tries his fifth three, can't get it to go, tipped around, and here comes Delaware in transition. Bryant goes off glass, lead down to five. Blue Hens outscoring Maryland by 10 now in the second half. Five and a half to go 
in College Park. No energy for the Terps right now. In this zone for Delaware really giving the Terps problems. Morsell can't get it to go. Rebound taken by Smith who puts it back. So again, we'll see how long we were, I should say, we were wondering how long can Mark Turgeon afford to go without Bruno Fernando. It's not going to be that long as the sophomore big man getting ready to check back in. Delaware down by 7-5 to play. Off the screen, Horton, pull-up jumper, can't get it. Ayala pulls it down. Here comes Ayala, the freshman inside to Smith. Another finish, and the harm. He'll go to the line for one more. Good move there by Ayala inside, who is being trusted with the ball late, Jared. You talked about it in half number one, how he'd been bringing the ball up a lot instead of Cowan here. Somehow avoided Bryant for Delaware. Thought that was for sure going to be a charge, but he stopped in his tracks. Fountain Smith for his second easy lane in a row, and that is huge for Maryland if Smith makes this the lead back up to double digits. Smith had a very slow start to this game, but he's done such a great job. Can't get the free throw to go. Now 19 and 10 for Jalen Smith in his collegiate debut. Double double for the freshman from Baltimore. Keeps the game, however, in single digits for the Blue Hens. Pushing finds Horton. Four and a half to play. Cowan thought he had a steal, instead slips in the floor. Kick out in the corner for three. Missed by Cushing, collects his own rebound, goes up strong, but there's Smith with the rejection. Jalen Smith, the last three possessions, has been unreal for Maryland and a turnover. Fast-paced action here in College Park. Thornton thought about a three. And what's the call here? Is it going to go against Cowan? It looks like it will. And so that freshman Horton draws the foul. Horton looked like he really extended his elbow out quickly and with a lot of force there on Cowan. Obviously, the referee had a better official from us back here, but from back where we're sitting, that looked like a clear offensive foul against the Blue Hens. Would have been Maryland possession. Bruno Fernando checking back from Maryland. Darrell Morcel heads to the bench. So now you've got Fernando, Smith, Cowan, Wiggins on the floor for the Terps along with Eric Ayala. And Horton hits the front end of the one-on-one. Eight-point game, four to play. So these are crucial now for Delaware. Not much time left, and eight points. They're going to be at the line a lot in the bonus. Free throws were something they struggled with last year, but if they can start sinking these, Jared, they may have a shot. Two for two from the line, lead down to seven. Ayala bringing it up for the Terps. They go inside to Smith. Outside, Cowan a three-pointer. Can't get it. It would have been huge for Maryland to extend the lead to double digits. That one did look better from Cowan. He looked more natural shooting that, but he's visibly upset with himself right now for his lack of offensive contributions. Horton wide open in the corner, elects not to take the three, goes up top and a foul call. That might be five on Bruno Fernando. I think it may be, and he may be out of this one. Huge for Maryland as Fernando walks right in front of us and heading to the bench. Huge for Maryland. It's Bruno Fernando appears to have fouled out of this game and that is officially number five on Fernando. Take a look at what happened here. Yeah, Fernando inside who's been such a presence, not on the initial shot but going down. Not quite sure how that's a foul on Fernando. Looked like Carter ripped down Bruno Fernando, who got called for the foul, it looks like. That's foul number five on him. As you mentioned, he's out. He's upset as well. And Jared, we've talked about Delaware getting back in this game. I think a large reason for that has been, obviously, Bruno out of the game. We were talking about how long can Turgeon go without putting Fernando in the game. And it was a while, and Delaware was cut at the single digits. And now it's just seven, and Fernando's gone with almost four minutes to go. This is scary time. This is sweaty bombs time for the Terps right now. Man, it's absolutely the, the worry you run with Bruno Fernando. Short, take a short break here in College Park. Last four minutes, sure to be exciting from Xfinity Center. Back in a moment on BTF. 
Welcome back to College Park. Seven-point game here at the Xfinity Center. Take a look at Bruno Fernando right there. Fouled out of the first game of the season. And Noah, they're going to miss him the rest of the way. Fernando finishes his night with 15 points on a 6-for-6 six six shooting night. But he's just been in such a presence inside when he's been on the floor for Maryland tonight. Well, in the first half, he really, really was, Jared. But he struggled to stay out of foul trouble here in half number two. Obviously now out of the game right now. And when he was out earlier, it was Delaware who was able to get back in this one. They cut the single digits before Fernando was able to get back. But overall for Fernando, pretty good night statistically. 15 points on 6 of 6 shooting from the floor and 3 of 4 from the line in just 20 minutes of play. But he's been almost outshined here in this second half by number 5 for Delaware. Eric Carter, 25 points, a career high, including his first ever three-pointer as a member of the Blue Heads before tonight, Jared. Over two career. And they get one for three now. And official just came over to me to tell to confirm that foul on Eric Carter was confirmed. So 25 points and two fouls in the technical tonight for Eric Carter. So with just under four minutes to play, Maryland's going to hang on against Delaware. But you see Bruno Fernando right there on the bench. It's a hook and a hold, we're being told, against Eric Carter. So, a hook and hold called against Fernando. That's a new rule implemented, and it will send Eric Carter to the line for free throws. Yeah, everyone's visibly confused here. Carter was looking back at the official <laughs> saying, is this a one and one? And the official confirmed, yes, it is. He's trying to will that one in. It goes down, but... As the official came over and told us, new rule this year. <laughs> I'm not sure really anybody on the floor knew much about it. 67 to 62, five point game. And so we get this straight here. So Fernando called for the hook and a hold foul. The old classic hook the and hold <laughs> penalty. <laughs> well, no, it's not. Well, oh, and here, here's something interesting. Daryl Morcel is now taking free throws as well. So to, this is to, the front end. to clarify, I believe it was a foul on Bruno Fernando and then a hook and hold as well on Carter. So okay. it was a double. That's why there's a free throws for both teams. As we mentioned, Jared, free throws of the utmost importance the rest and of the way. And Fernando fouling out of the game, unable to shoot the free throws. So Marcel taking them for Maryland. So we've sifted through the confusion here. It's Somehow. game one. It's game one of the college basketball season in this new rule. The hook and hold. <laughs> Already seeing it early on. So six point game. Maryland trying to hold on. Delaware trying to fight back. Wiggins goes outside. Leads to Ayala. 19 on the shot clock. Cowan fighting his way through traffic. Out to Ayala. He comes inside now with his right hand. Gets it to go. Maryland. Eight point game. Maryland's been struggling so much inside, getting past Carter, who's been just such a presence inside. But they kept trying and trying that same possession. Ayala finally able to just squeeze by him and find an open lane for that right-handed lay-in. Going to that left side off a number of screens. Kevin Anderson against Cowan. Here is Bryant, his three off fire. Rebound taken by Marcel. We're under three to play. Terps on top by eight. Both teams now have entered the double bonus. Important for potential late free throw shooting if it comes to this. Inside, Marcel, turnaround jumper. Can't get it, Cushing pulls it down. Almost too open there was Marcel. Turned around and found nobody in front of him. Jumped up quickly and just a little bit long there. Anderson, floater. Can't get it, but there's Carter with the rebound. He collects it, goes off the glass for the finish. 27 points for the senior Eric Carter. A timeout call. Eric Carter is the only one that looks really calm right now on Delaware. This would be the win of the last few years for the Blue Heads if they were able to pull this one off. And they seem kind of pressing on offense. Everybody's searching for the perfect shot. But Carter, the veteran, I mean, he's been outstanding all game, but especially as of late, calming everyone down. A smart play right there on the putback. And Jared, who would have thought a six-point game with 2.20 to go? I mean, Maryland was dominating this game. They were up by around 20 earlier in this second half. We thought this one was all but over. But these Delaware Blue Hens, a very, very feisty group. Delaware has never beaten a Big Ten team the existence of their program. 0-9 all time. Last time they even played a Big Ten team came in 2014 when they 
hasn't made the NCAA tournament. Crushed by Michigan State that year, the number three seed, led by Tom Izzo. These Terps will run into them later. Take a look at Jalen Smith. And Maryland hangs on to win. The freshman from Mount St. Joe is a big part of it. He's been huge. Gone up a little bit soft at times, which I've been critical of him. But overall, in his first real college basketball game, I've been very impressed by him and a lot of these freshmen for the Terps. You've seen them a lot tonight. You see three of them on the floor right now. Two minutes to play. Anthony Cowan directing traffic. Lobs up to Smith. Somehow able to catch it through traffic. 12 on the shot clock. Wiggins fakes a three. Now makes his way inside. Back out to Ayala. And Delaware is just playing some excellent defense as Cowan lets a three-pointer go. Can't get it. Smith collects the rebound. Fights his way back inside. And he's hacked. Jalen Smith has been the reason... Maryland has been able to stave off Delaware in the second half. And I think a big reason he's been able to have this success as of late is he's really just taken more responsibility on with Bruno Fernando fouling out of the game. Those two are working well in unison earlier in this one as Cowan misses this three. I thought it would have been smart to send that one back out, but he always got to go up strong with Smith did right there. Props to him, albeit you got to knock these down at the free throw line if you want to pull away here. Smith now three for five at the line, hanging on 19 and 13. A chance to register a 2010 game in his first game as a Maryland Terrapin. But he can't do it. 0 for 2 from the line, and you can say it's just the freshman nerves all you want, but head by six with two minutes left. Those are critical free throws you have to make. Delaware goes inside to Eric Carter. I would imagine that's where they'll go the remainder of this game. He's been reasons Delaware's in this outside Cushing tries a three Jacob Cushing what a performance in this second half and he's fired up Delaware cuts it to three timeout Mark Turgeon and Delaware almost stole that as the Terps were bringing it across half court trying to call a timeout there and quickly here Jared Delaware obviously catching fire from deep in this one they've hit six three-pointers Maryland they hit two of their first four they're two of 18 now in this one. So needless to say, they've struggled missing their last 14 shots from outside. And a big part of that, Anthony Cowan, 0 of 5 from distance. And maybe only one of those has been even close. That one a minute ago here did hit rim, but he's been looking not his normal self from shooting outside. Now Maryland, they played pitifully in the last 10 minutes here, but they do have a chance to start the season out with a win. And if you're Delaware, obviously, I mean, this is a program-defining win if you're able to pull this one off down by around 20 earlier in this one. So a lot on the line here. How about the game? Eric Carter, not just 29 points, nine rebounds, an assist in there as well. He is playing with four fouls, so we'll have to be careful. But Jacob Cushing, a non-factor in that first half. Three huge three-pointers for the Blue Hens. With 81 seconds left, they are within three. Maryland has been unable to keep them away. Just over a minute to play. Cowan to Ayala. Inside. Back out to Marcel. 13 on the shot clock. Cowan floats one up, but he's fouled. They're going to get Ithiel Horton. So Smith and Morcell had just missed free throws in the last few possessions for the Terps, but yet Cowan, a reliable veteran in here. And this is the point where he's kind of taking that mellow trimble role, if you will, where the team is just struggling and he knows it has to be him that takes over on the offensive side of the ball because they have been struggling, he has been struggling, but he still knows he's the guy for this team. Cowan misses the free throw. Four for seven from the line tonight for the junior guard. And Maryland has missed their last three from the stripe as Delaware has come back here in the last five minutes. Cowan hits this one though. That's huge. Now it's a two-possession game instead of a one-possession game. Now Bruno Fernando on the floor tonight. Maryland has struggled. There is no doubt about it. Anderson, the cross-up, goes inside and Smith rejects him. Under a minute to play. Cowan directing, directing traffic. They go to Morcell. Now they'll slow the pace as Mark Turgeon screaming on the sideline. Slow it down, slow it down. And the Terps will let it tick under 40 to play. Kevin Anderson clearly hurt, limping back on defense for the Blue Ends. Luckily for him, Maryland slowing this one down. Four-point game. Cowan with five. Cowan, Morcell, three. No. 
Rebound tips. Can Delaware save it? Yes, it's Delaware ball. It's tipped off Maryland with 26 seconds left. Blue Hens, it's a two possession game, but if you score quickly here, you give yourself a chance. And for Maryland offensively right there, Jared, as we'll get to Delaware in a moment, this team over the past four or five years, Mark Turgeon led ball club has been much maligned as far as what they're able to do in a half court offense. And right there, I get letting the clock run down. It's ever so important, but they waited till there was about four or five seconds on the shot clock to even start something. And you get more Sal shooting a three who, as you mentioned, had three three-pointers all of last season. Yes, he did hit one tonight, but he's really done nothing since then. Just two of seven from the floor is the sophomore. That's a really, really tough shot to take in what is just a four-point game. This one's obviously far from over. Maryland led by 22 points with 14 minutes and 26 seconds to play in the second half. Lead is down to four with 26 seconds left, and Eric Carter has done everything he could, and officials will confirm it's Delaware ball. This is huge right now, and for Delaware, you expect them immediately to try to find Carter down low, but of course, Cushing, ever so dangerous for the Blue Hens, and I mean, can personally for the Terps, in the last almost three minutes of play, zero field goals. Delaware's gonna need at least one. 20 seconds, this crowd getting loud, pushing, finds his way inside, doesn't get it to go, now no foul called, Cowan collects the rebound, and he'll head to the free throw line. Good stop there by Jalen Smith, could have maybe argued the foul should have been called, but Jacob Cushing couldn't finish the layup. Anthony Cowan has a chance to put this game on ice with 13 seconds left. Good take by Cushing, trying to go at the freshman in draw a foul there, would have been big, maybe cut that lead to a one possession game, two or three, but from here it looked like a pretty solid play by Smith to go up strong on that one. Cowan went one for two on his last trip. Gets the first, lead up to five. So well, we talked at halftime about how impressed we were with this Maryland team in the first half, but some of the old tricks that have plagued Maryland in the past, just Blowing leads and not able to close out games. We've seen it on display here in the second half. Maryland does look to be in solid position here. Up six with 13 seconds left. But Delaware's second half performance has been nothing short of remarkable. Here's Bryant coming inside, twisting and turning on Smith. Rebound taken. Clock expires. Maryland hangs on in its season opener to defeat Delaware in College Park. It wasn't easy but our Turgeon and crew hold on to start 1-0 here in 20.